Hey, everybody, it's Mark Patterson. I'm back again with another great episode of Finding Your Summit, all about people overcoming adversity and finding their way. And before we get into today's great guest, I want to draw attention to my website, www.markpattersonnfl.com. Bunch of stuff there, over 270 podcasts. It goes back a number of years, almost on a weekly basis. I would appreciate some love ratings and review on Apple. It helps elevate the show's popularity in the crowded world of podcasts. So I'd appreciate that. Number one. Number two, you can go see the film Searching for the Summit, the award-winning Best Picture Emmy for my ever my journey up and down Mount Everest, the NFL shot. So it's really cool. And number three, we continue to raise money for Amelia's Everest. Go there. All donations go 100% to higher ground to help empower other people. It's done an amazing amount for my daughter who has epilepsy. So that's why we do things to pay it for. Okay, on that note, let's jump in today's guest. Her name is Kelly Lynn Adams. Kelly, how are you doing? Good, Mark. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. Well, I'm honored back. And I think uh, I am beaming from Sun Valley, Idaho, and you are all the way in New York City. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so the mountains look a little bit different here than they do. Your mountains are more probably calculated in, in feet and in uh, big high rise buildings than they are in actual, you know, foothills, right? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. So let me, uh, let me give um, the audience just kind of a little background. And then we're going to dig in on kind of, since this is the beginning, we're in January now, 2023. I can't believe it. You know, time flies, as they say, you are award winning executive business, business coach, you're a speaker, you're an advisor, you're an investor, and so much more. And one of the reasons why I want to have you on is because when we start talking about January and we always, you know, come December, we're kind of wrapping it up. And then when we get into the new year, you know, it's kind of for a lot of people, a time of renewal, a time of a place where people can actually take a step back and kind of rethink their goals, where they are, where they want to go, and how they're going to get there. And I think based on doing a little bit of research, you know, on you, this is what you specialize in, really how to become the best version of ourselves. So let's start off with with this. Um, a lot of times when people are in this space, it starts with themselves, right? Because they've gone through some pattern in the past, which somehow another in there, they've been able to have a breakthrough. And so I think this pod is for all those people that um, have had, maybe been stuck, not knowing where they're going. Life happens, all those things that fall into those categories. And it's just the strategies of how you get out. And sometimes when we're all in quicksand, we don't know how to get out. And so, you know, we need others to provide kind of a third party um, perspective on how those things happen. So let's start with you. How did you get into this space? Yeah, great question. Uh, it has been evolving, I will say that. Uh, however, and I grew up with a lot of different adversity from like a speech impediment to uh, some other things, traumas that I have uncovered. But I, you know, 18 years, corporate America, climbed the corporate ladder and uh, loved it, burnt out, landed in the hospital. Uh, I was overworking. My work was, you know, I was, my worth came from my work uh, because I was really, I, I wanted the love and recognition and all the things that come with the external validation to really make myself feel good. Uh, but I discovered coaching. I was in a network marketing business, selling skincare and <laughs> doing the home party thing. And one of my clients is like, you'd be a great coach. And this is back in 2009. And I'm like, a, like a basketball coach. Like, what do you mean coaching? And she's like, no, like a, like a life coach. And I was like, what is that? So uh, that's how I got in and Never looked back. And I grew my business alongside my corporate career, left corporate. And uh, it's been a, definitely a journey of healing my own traumas, uh, pushing my own boundaries and all of that. All the, all the things, Mark, all the things. Okay. Well, let's talk about all the things. So you're talking about ending up in the hospital. And so like, explain what that means when somebody gets so burned out from work and obviously you're getting a lot of gratification, whether or not you did well or not that ultimately you take yourself to such the edge that you end up in the hospital. Like how, I don't know if that's exhaustion or just kind of mentally, like you would just break down or like, yeah. what, what are you going in for? Yeah. So I, it was uh, adrenal fatigue 
And it was, I had everything like oral thrust. My body was shutting down, uh, fever. I just, it was, I was eating. Let, let's just put it this way. I was getting up at 5 a.m., going to work, eating fast food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I remember one time in a meeting, I looked up the clock, it was four o'clock. And I'm like, oh, I had, I didn't have anything to drink. I didn't eat anything. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't go to the bathroom. Like, what is going on? And I knew what I was doing to my body. And so it was like a, it was subconscious and unconscious. And so my body was just shutting down and I went to the doctors. I'm like, I was having fevers. I I was just literally, and he's like, you need to go to the hospital now. Uh, So they tested like my organs and all that stuff. So yeah, I stayed in the hospital. I was out of work for, I think like two months. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get out of bed. And all I did was just sleep and, and, and put nutrition back into my body and all of that. And you know, I, I knew what, like I said, I knew it, w- it was happening while it was happening. We're like, oh, it's only going to, you know, this work thing is only going to be, you know, two months long. I, I can do anything for two months because we were in a really crazy, busy time. And um, my body's like, yeah, no, no, you're not. <laughs> so. Sometimes it just plays that way. So the, the, okay. So you're in a place, you're running yourself into a wall. Yeah. And now at some point in time, after two months, you get released. And now yeah. you go back into the wild, so to speak, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, so now you're back there, right? And now in your mind, did you did you like literally go to another coach? Did you go? How did you seek help? I'm trying to I'm trying to understand like yeah. your path out and some discoveries that you made along the way, and what were those? Yeah, yeah. So definitely hired a coach, did the therapy thing, did all the the also looked at my trauma. Like I'm still like looking at my trauma and still healing. Like the work is never done in my eyes. The work is never done. It's just another layer and deeper layer. Uh, so that's when I really started the journey. And I was like, I, you know, I have to make some really tough decisions for myself. And it was really honoring myself and seeking that validation within myself. So a lot of inner childhood work, all of that. Uh, and it was also a mindset, you know, of, of am I good enough? If I don't have an X, Y, Z, right? I was seeking all the validation in, in external things. So it was just a step-by-step process. Um, you know, it was investing in myself. It was taking care of myself. It was having non-negotiables. Like I would shut down at a certain time of day, uh, eating right, eating better, moving my body, um, just putting boundaries and setting a lot of those things up in my life and having non-negotiables and like, what am I available for? What am I not available for? And it took some time uh, because it it was in a sense, like a work addiction. It was a work addiction. Um, Yeah. So it was, it was just different pieces that. So, yeah. So, so I guess my, my curiosity would ask you, what was it about why the question of why you, you had it? So we know what it was, but why do you feel like you were so work obsessed and kind of seeking approval Yeah, right, based on something that maybe you didn't get when you were a kid? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that that's exactly what it was. It was, I was getting uh, love recognition. Uh, I was like, Oh, I'm good enough right now. Like, Oh, I, this makes me feel a certain way. And, and think about it. It's like, what I put posted this in, in to my community. It's like, we want the things we want because we think it's going to have a feeling. It's going to make us feel a certain way. And the work in my eyes, the inner work is feeling that certain way first <laughs> and then doing things because it, that's what it is. We want the car. We want the spouse. We want um, whatever it is. We want maybe just peace of mind, right? And and how do we go about seeking that? And a lot of people do it externally. And that's what I was doing. And still, like I catch myself today. I'm like, oh, I'm doing that thing again, Kelly, right? So it's okay. Like, what do I need? Or what does five-year-old Kelly need? Or, you know, how do I, how can I be with myself when I'm with myself, when I'm alone? You know, yeah. how do I feel about myself? Uh, yeah, and quick side note, I want to thank Marco. Shout out to you for for connecting us in this. You know, what I've always thought about is there's there's the difference between willing and want, right? So I work with Marco at Sports Illustrated. And are you willing to do the things to get to where you need to be, or you just want those things to happen? Like you said, we all want to become a millionaire or own 80 houses. I mean, whatever somebody's want is, 
Yeah. But that the hard stuff is, are you willing to do what it takes to get to where you want to go? And you really have to love that process that's in between there, right? You have to really emotionally invest yourself into it and, and be doing things for obviously um, the right re- reason. Um, one of the things that that you've come up with um, that I saw, there's six ways to a breakthrough, you know, without burning out. So, you know, you want to go do this certain thing and you're willing to put that work in. But I'm interested on what are, you don't have to name all six, but give me some strategies on some some ways that people can start to attack, you know, their goals that are out there. We want to become, you know, you want to, maybe it's you want to eat better. And you mentioned so, some of these at the periphery, but you want to eat better. You want to take better, better care of your body. There are certain things in your professional career that you probably want to achieve. But what are some of those ways that somebody can, 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 you know, start to go towards the light to get through to the other side. Yeah. And first of all, I'll say this, it, it has to come from like a, um, a want, right? Like it is a desire. What's your North star? What's your why the why has to pull you and don't get me wrong. I'm a do whatever it takes kind of, kind of person. And at the same time, it's also honoring the space in between. Cause sometimes in this society, right. It's, It's Amazon, Venmo, Prime, you know, we get it instant gratification Mm. and people get used to that, right? Our phones. And so the first step I think is knowing your North North Star and why you want what you want and why, why you want that. Like there has to be a D I said, you have to have a why that makes you cry. So that when you're feeling the rejection or you're feeling the pain or whatever comes up, that why has to literally pull you. So I would say that's the first step. And then second is going back to kind of the self-care piece, doing whatever it takes, yet not to the expense of your like self-sabotage, like not to your own detriment. So whatever that is, if you can build non-negotiables for yourself, it's going to look different for every single person. And whether that's, you know, limiting time on your phone or setting a time to go to, you know, bed or, or getting X amount of hours of sleep, whatever it is, you know, drinking more water, simple things. So having those non-negotiables, I think people forget. And there's a you know a lot of people that I serve and I work with, they put so many other people before themselves. And so that's, you know, we get to learn to put ourselves first. And um, and then develop a plan. A lot of people say they want things and they just don't make a plan or they'll fly by the seat of the, their pants. And listen, I love spontaneity. I love all of that. However, you know, like baking a cake. You need to know the ingredients. You need to know the steps to bake a cake. So like, what is the plan to get there? Why don't you think enough people plan, you know, you, you, um, fail to plan or, or plan to fail, right. As they say. So well, why is that? It's just an opinion, but why, why, you know, it seems like such an easy thing. Like all these things you're saying are easy, Right. But if everybody did it, there, there wouldn't be any problems. But the fact is that, you know, the diets come out in January and goals come out and New Year's resolutions and all these things. And people don't fulfill those things. And by March or April, they're just kind of they've reverted back to those same old habits they've always had. And so, again, uh, you know, doing these different things, being non-negotiable, you know, saying you're going to go to bed, saying you're not going to you're going to cut down drinking, you're going to eat healthier, you're going to you know, achieve whatever it is. But I'm just wondering the psychology, why so many yeah. people fail at that. Yeah. Well, a lot of it, some, some of it has to do with trauma. Some of it has to do, we can reprogram our brains, right? Neuroplasticity. We can, we can re it's just a reprogramming and unlearning. And and some people are afraid of commitment, right? Oh, if I, you know, if I can't keep my promises to myself, who am I? That's like the self-trust component, but it's literally just forming new patterns. And I know it's ju- it's not as simple, but it's, brainwashing yourself. (laughs) It's unlearning that those things that stop you, it's getting curious of like, huh, why do I keep saying I'm going to do something and then not do it? What is underneath Mm -hmm. that? And sometimes it does stem from childhood. Sometimes it's just pure uh, fear of, oh, can I really do this? You know, can I really commit to myself? Can I really trust myself to do this? And what I have found is that confidence, right? Confidence just comes with doing consistent and committed actions over time, right? So if you fall off one day, get back on the next. And I think people take it. uh, So like, oh, I I failed here. I'm just going to screw it. I'm just going to 
fail again, right? So it's being uh, flexible and adaptable to yourself and changes, you know, some, for some people change is hard. We, we mm-hmm. like the safety and security that comes with the familiar out familiarity. I can't say that word of, of the same, right? If something's the same, Oh, I, I seek safety and security in it. If I have to change, there's a little bit of level, like the unknown, like, can I be comfortable in the unknown? What's going to happen in the unknown? So I think it's all different reasons for people. But if, if you get curious of like what that is, I know for me, it's definitely a safety security thing. Like sometimes I will stay safe and secure in the known, even though I know it's not good for me, rather than taking the unknown because I'm not sure what the unknown is going to be. And that's scary. And it could be the yeah. best thing ever. Yep. It's called fear and fear just paralyzes so many different people, right? On, yeah. on going forward and jumping in, you know, especially things that you don't know nothing about, like the fear of the unknown. And that's, that's a tough place to be. Um, you've worked with a number of brands, Gucci, Kenneth Cole, Athletica, Bed Bath & Beyond, a bunch of other ones like that. When you go in and help write strategy or, or I'm trying to understand what you do, like how are you taking this skill set and help them in terms of yeah. blowing their brands up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's coaching, it's strategy. It's, it's really whatever I've coached high level executives, you know, on the mindset, embodiment, I'm trauma informed, all of the things and, uh, and even strategy. So it depends on what the organization needs. Well, what it comes down to is also the individual, right? We all have our, where we get stuck or stagnant or where we have our blind spots. And so I'm just there to really like be like, where's the blind spot? Just get curious. So what's going, what's not working or or what's not really, uh, you know, to your liking, you know, how can you amplify and, and really Mm -hmm. get conscious? And some people, you know, listen, some people, as you know, are very successful. They have everything in the world, everything, money, cars, all the things. And it's their mental health. It's their, it's their peace of mind, right. Or it's, they're not having enough time for their kids and their family, or it's, it is growing and, and scaling a business. So it's all different things. Um, and we just got to get at like what is getting in the way. And then there's nothing, there's nothing bad or wrong and no one is broken and no one needs fixing, right? Coaching is just literally like asking powerful questions because within coaching is like you are your own best guru. And sometimes we just don't see it or there's something in the way or there's a blind spot or there's a, a childhood trauma or what have you. Yeah, I think one of the things the the going back to the word you use blind spot. Um, I, I think w- with you know when you go out there with the cell phone, especially living in a big city like New York or these other metropolitan cities around the U.S. or the world, and and there's just there's this uh, element I think in the power of curiosity that people don't spend enough time just asking like how does that happen and why does that work and how can we get better and you know with the with the internet it is a tool. Um, there's the power of, of learning a lot about a lot of things that you don't know. And there's so much that can be learned if you just start asking some questions in a way that you can improve your knowledge based on how to do something, self-improvement, things that you're doing at work, other things, other places you can go. Um, in 2021, I'm, I'm asking this question because I truly don't know what it is. You were a Stevie one, uh, what did I say? Stevie wonder, a Stevie winner for women. There's a lot of, there's a lot of W's in there. What, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. So it's an, it's awards program. It's international. Uh, so it's basically a business awards, uh, program. So I was under female, female, I think it was successful, most successful female in the U S with like under 10 employees. <laughs> that was my category, but it's literally a global, um, awards program. And it's uh, global. They they look at your business. They look at what you do. They have all these like things they rate you on. Um, so I was bronze. Yeah, I was bronze. Yeah. So um, it was great. You know, I was like, I submitted all the questions. I got interviewed, and um, that's the award winning piece in my title. Yeah, hey, <laughs> that comes you know, through. what you know what? I didn't win it, so you won it, so you you deserve it. Um, when you start talking about twenty twenty three, like. If you were to say, you know, you you walk into a bar or into a room, you know, call it whatever you want, and there's a bunch of people sitting around and they're they're just trying to figure out they, they they're not feeling fulfilled enough, right? And you're trying to get them like to 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 like think outside the box on where they went, but they just don't know what their why, 
right? They don't know how to take a jump. They don't know how to leap. Like, how do you, how do you encourage people to like, you know, start to really tap into things that they don't even know that they necessarily know in order to, you know, potentially reach their potential someday doing something new. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a process I go through myself and even if it's the unknown, it's, it's okay. So I write a letter to myself a year from today. So I did it, you know, December 31st. I was like, where is Kelly going to be or want to be when December 31st, 2024, the next year goes, Mm. comes around. Where do I, how do I want to feel? What do I want to be doing? What, what would I want to have achieved? And this can look like anything for anyone. So it's like, and this is where the curiosity comes in of asking yourself, like, what is it that you still desire, right? Is there something that's like untapped and maybe you don't know, and maybe it's getting curious. And if you don't know, what did you like to do when you were a kid, (laughs) right? It's like when you were five or three or 10, you remember, what did you like to do? Or what have, what's been sitting on a list or in your head that you're like, you keep saying that you want to do it, whether travel, whatever it is. Uh, so really having people getting curious of like, okay, what did I like as a kid? What did I like as a teenager? Whatever it is, maybe go explore some of that to get into that. Like, what is it? But I guarantee someone listening to this knows there's something that they want to be doing or they want to be feeling or they want to experience and they just haven't got around to it or what have you. It could be literally as simple as like taking a vacation. So, mm-hmm. but I write a, a, a letter to myself of being like, where do I want to be? feel, do, have all of that a year from now. And some people are like, oh, that's a lot of pressure. But it's like, no, it's just literally your future self, right? It's okay. What's my North star? What's driving me? How do, how would my future self be? You know? So I always use that because I'm constantly evolving and and unlearning and relearning to just become the best version of myself and to get out of my own way. And then I also challenge myself every day to do something uncomfortable whether that's putting myself out there, talking to someone, asking a question, and just to really challenge, challenge myself, take a cold shower, like <laughs> whatever it is, right? Yeah, no, I I, I appreciate that. Um, and just pulling that into my own life, the the uh, this is ten years ago of, of again saying, what do I want my life to be like, and how now do I create the best version? And, and so I decided to go off, like I tap back into what, what do I love doing? Cause I want to do something big and what I've always been associated with, cause my background is athletics. And so I want to do something athletically, athletically big, but within that, you know, there's certain restrictions. I can't go back and play in the NFL and things like that. So what else can I do? And so I got into mountain climbing and, you know, set the seven summit goal uh, to climb around the world, which I achieved. And and now I'm kind of going through this next iteration of, okay, what's the next decade look like? So for me, it's not just, you know, what the next year um, encompasses, but also beyond, like, how can I keep going and, and achieving? Because what's done is done. I don't really care about that. It's it's really what's ahead. And that's what it, it, it sakes me about the future. And, and without goals, I, I just feel like I'm some guy in a closet, you know, going in a circle. You know, you're really not going anywhere outside of the same flipping thing you do every single day. And it's so easy to be average. I mean, to me, and again, that doesn't mean you have to win, you know, best actor or something, but it's just, it's easy to be average. It's hard to be extraordinary. And so are you willing to do the things on a day to day that are going to get you to doing something with having a written goal, because you're going to achieve so much more writing things down than if you don't, they're way out there. So I mean, it's just my little world, but that's that's what's worked for me. I've you know I've literally put that to use and to practice, and that has actually paid off for me in a big way. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And so that's another thing. It's like pen to paper. I write my down my goals every single day, and because there, there's something right with the subconscious mind. And I love what you said, Mark, about uh, the next decade. And this is why I like to tell people: is like, listen, we don't know our end date, right? Our physical when we're out of your physical body, we don't know that date. It could be tomorrow. It could be a week from now. It could be. 20 years, it doesn't, we don't know. However, it's like, that's the motivation also around people being like, okay, if you only had a week to live, or if you had only had a year to live, right? Like what, what would you be doing? Like, what what do you want to do? And so I always think about that because yeah, I don't know when I'm leaving this earth, right. In this body, but it's like that, what do I get to do? Like, there's so much, right. To be a great grateful for. And also Mm -hmm. it's like, what is it before you leave? 
and this is a bigger question. Not everyone's like, oh, I don't want to make a huge impact, but it's, it's, you don't have to, you know, like, like you climb mountains or whatever, like it is, it can be simple as being just present with your family. Right. So it's like, before you leave this earth in the physical body, what do you want to feel? Like, what do you want to experience or, or how do you want to serve other people? Right. So that's a powerful question for me because it's like, holy heck, I don't even know when that time is. And I'm going to utilize each day to the fullest, uh, not to the burnout, fullest, <laughs> but to the yeah. fullest, uh, to my capacity, right? And honoring myself. Yeah. Now that, and you know, like, look, Lisa Marie Presley just died at 54 years old um, last week, right? And and there's there's been a bunch of other kind of, it seems like there's been a string of people that have passed. And to me, even though as somber as those things are, there are also reminders that, like you said, life is short. And how are you going to make an impact while you have your time? And I've also thought about it kind of a different way that if there is some magical crystal ball and say you are the keeper of that magical ball and people could come to you and say, okay, when is my time up? And you look into this, this prism and in there it's pulled up my name and said, okay, you know, your, your lifeline goes till 92 and that's it. And so would you change the way you live life? Not knowing that there's a beginning the day you find out and an end the day that you just told me my, my, all right. So it's just a, it's an interesting mindset when people are really put to the wall and where they take, maybe it's next week. I don't know, but it, 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 I think it would change the mindset versus really not thinking about it and just waking up and going to bed and eating when you eat and, you know, going about life as, as normal. But I think that's where really transformation comes in is when you're able to like elevate yourself to, to someplace different to go achieve something because you know that life is precious and short and all those other things that you were talking about. So, so I love that. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, I, I assume you're in New York. I, I would assume with COVID, one of the things that one of the blessings for many people that, that have come out is your ability to, to coach yeah. and, and meet people via zoom, via Google meet, things like that. Yeah. So you don't have to have all your clients in New York city. You're, basically global. So you mm-hmm. can talk to anybody anywhere as long as they have an internet connection. I would assume that's the case, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have international clients even before COVID. I had international clients and and yeah. So, I mean, that's the beauty of what I do is, is coaching is, you know, and, and the speaking too. I mean, I literally just, I moderated a, a talk today, you know, over 500 people, right? Via Zoom actually. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful to, to have that impact, you know, uh, virtually. For people. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of I think we were the one that one of the first major media companies, Sports Illustrated, to actually go virtual. And it's it's we've we've continued to grow, 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 grow. And it's been a fun ride. And I find myself super efficient. I mean, it doesn't work for everybody, but it certainly has worked for us and and or me. So in the way that I can go out in the morning, I can climb, I can practice, I can train, I can do those other things and come back and be present in the office uh, uh, um, in the office. And and do my thing. Um, yeah. Tell us where people can find you. Yeah, so just my website, kellylynnadams.com. Just there. Just there. Look at you. Just there. You, you'll find. Yeah, you'll you'll go down the rabbit hole if you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the rabbit hole would be a whole bunch of social media sides. So, um, listen, I appreciate you coming on, and 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 I think it is important, and the timing is interesting that you're coming on in January. Right now, we're January nineteenth. We'll probably broadcast this in a couple of weeks, and. Um, yeah, it's it's a time for renewal. It's never too late for anybody to get going. And that's the whole key to success is that there's no better time than now. So if you're somebody out there, you feel like you're stuck, you know, tap into Kelly and she can help you un, un, get unstuck and and move forward towards the types of thing you want to do in your life. So on that note, Kelly, thank you so much for coming on. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Mark, for having me. And it's an honor. All right, there she is, the one, the only Kelly Lynn Adams. Thank you so much.